This is one of our spirit schools, ministered by Gustave Leroux. Please enjoy it. Know that it will take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Please subscribe and have a great day. I guess I don't know if you guys experienced this, but I, when I was driving here tonight, I always, always, always go to the spirit when I drive. But tonight, for some reason, I really just started engaging and praying in the spirit, just in taking in that frequency that my spirit releases um, as I pray in tongues. And I just got, got so excited. And I actually screamed a little bit, so I was wondering, oh my God, I hope no one, can, you know, one sees me as they drive past me, because I must look completely crazy, you know? Woo! <laughs> it's just weird. But it was incredible, and it, it's, it still is. It's just engaging with Yahweh at all levels available. And I say this all the time. There's some things that's never part of the old. Can we understand that? Amen. That's good. You know, there's some things that's never going to be part of the old. And tongues, and speaking in tongues, and praying in tongues is one of those things. Thank you, Lord. Right? You can't say, oh, well, well tongues was for yesterday, because it's not for tongues yesterday. Yesterday. It will right. always be for today, no matter yes. what age we're in. That's good. Right? And I just say that because people think, because we're moving on from age to age, and we say, well, the way we used to war, we don't want to war like that anymore. It's because it wasn't the full truth. Yeah, hmm. yeah. It was a measure of truth that we did, and we, we put everything into it, but yet we still got beaten up. You know, we look at the Bible and the Word, and the way that we studied the Word, and the way that we engaged with the Word, and we understand now that the Word's not just the Bible. Mm -hmm. but, but a couple of years ago, that's not what we perceived. We believed that the Word of God was the beginning and the end of everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that's not the truth. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because if the Word in its measure that we have it, the Bible, was the full truth, be then it will set us free. Completely. Because that's what the Bible says, right? It says the Word of God will set us free. It will make you free. Make you free. Yeah. So we understand the Word is not the Bible. It's more than the Bible. It's more. It's so if you only have one small portion of the truth, it's true, but it's not the full truth. Amen. So if the full truth makes you free, then a half the truth, although it's true, is not going to make you free. You won't. Mm -hmm. Right, so there's things that if you want the fullness of the truth, then you have to change the way you perceive things, the way you understand things, the way you walk in things. Right, that's what we're doing. That's what spirit school is all about: changing the way you think, changing the way you perceive things. Yeah. Right, but tongues is not it's not something we've done wrong. Nope. Right. That's correct. <laughs> I like that because wow, thank you Jesus. It's one thing we didn't do wrong. That's right. Praise God. Thank but what we are doing is, I think we're beating. Um, Paul with this. Not that it's a competition, but kind of is. He says, I pray in tongues more than all of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's have a race, Paul. Come on. <laughs> I remember my, 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 my pastor, who um, is an incredible, incredible, phenomenal man of God. Um, I've had a few of you some of his books, Hell Bites. Yep. Just an incredible guy. He, he, he's passion for praying in tongues always got me on fire for it. And I tell you God before, I went through a season of my life, a whole year, where I set my phone, and uh, believe this or not, but it was a flip phone. <laughs> my, my kids think that's the funniest thing on the planet. You had a flip phone, Dad? Oh, geez, how old are you? <laughs> oh my God, come on, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I used to set my phone and it would snooze right through the day, every day for a year, every 10 minutes. Hmm. It irritated everybody, of course, you know, it's kind of irritating. But what the idea behind it was that I would be constantly reminding myself to pray in tongues. All right. And that's what I did. And that's what became a habit that changed my life. Thank you. <coughs> then my, my, one of my pastors, it was an, I was his assistant for many years, he says, he said some things that kind of irritated me. You know, uh, he said, when you pray in tongues, you have to pray with your understanding as well. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. I thought, well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, pray in tongues and you won't have understanding of what you're saying. <coughs> so I would pray in tongues all day and would just be caught up. Like, like it would just be a, a, a spiritual frequency released from my spirit, but my mind is not really focused on what my spirit's releasing into the atmosphere. All right. And so what he was saying is that the good idea would be for your, your soul to be engaging with what your spirit man is releasing into the atmosphere. That's good. Right. Because that actually opens up a realm for you to understand what's being released and what you're doing and what you're carrying and who you are. 
That opens the gates and the doors and it makes you open to what you're busy doing in the spirit as a spirit being. All right. So again, when I click that, it kind of changed things for me. Uh, so there's many things that the Father is, is bringing alignment to. That's a lot of our theology. It's not nice. How many of you like to be told that you're wrong? No. Mm. Nobody. Yeah, because you're all, all women now, yeah. And men. And, 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 me and you. I don't know about you, but in my house, I am wrong all the time. Amen. It's like an Olympic act I have. Yes. I can just do something and I know it's wrong. And my wife's like, don't talk to the kids like that. And I'm like, I would love to say, no, I, I, I should talk to the kids like that because it's okay. You know, they can yeah. handle it. But I know I'm wrong. Uh -huh. I think it's just built in woman. Woman just... That's because, because wisdom is a, a female spirit. Yeah. That's why women are always right. Always right. Yeah. Yeah. Always My wife says, uh, she says, I don't know everything, I'm just always right. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> always right. <laughs> and and I'm always wrong. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> but, but it also comes with being like the priest in the house. Mm -hmm. right? the, the priest has to take responsibility for everything that happens in the house. Amen, brother. That's not easy. Amen. But if you, can, if you can accept that you're always wrong, <laughs> but you can't always be wrong, right? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just flapping lip sync tonight. It's always wrong. <laughs> so what I want to do tonight is we're going to touch... I, I did some of this yesterday, actually, like on uh, Tuesday. Not, not quite the same, but it seems to kind of have the same effect. Uh, because when we eat and drink of Yahweh in communion, right... All right. Uh, Yad, Shen, Vav, Hey. We begin to understand what it does. It actually recreates your DNA. Yeah. Amen. So that's kind of what we're doing today is understanding that the blood has a recreative ability. All right. Meaning that the restoration that the blood brings to you is dimensional in every area and part of your life. Body, soul, spirit. All right. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise Him up upon the last day. Now just to wait, just to listen to that for a couple of seconds and remind yourself that believing on Him, I can't believe in Him unless I'm in Him. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, that's the, the decision I make when I give my life to Yeshua, not in that what we call born again, because how many of you understand there's no such word in the Bible? Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's born being from born above. from above, right? And, you know, someone made a statement the other day in one of the conferences I went to, and she said that, she said, I'm not born again. I'm born from above. Amen. And I just, I just, I mean, I know that that's what the word actually says, the original translation, and I really just like that idea. But for me to really become a believer, I have to believe in Him. Yes. yes. Amen. But, and the idea of believing in Him is entering into who He is through the blood of Yeshua, right? Yes. Because right. it's because of what He did that I get to believe in Him, that I get to become born from above, and I get to go into the kingdom of heaven, I get to be reconciled, I get to be renewed, I get to go through a transformation, I get to go to be trans... Uh, trans-relocated, I get myself completely consumed in His image, but it's all because of the blood. Yes. It's all because of the act of what Yeshua did on the cross for me, right? Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And I get to understand eternal life and living forever. Thank you. Now, we might not look at those two as the same thing because it's not the same thing. One says that I will, I will never perish, I will always live, but our perception of, of life is that everybody will die. Mm -hmm. Everyone in this room is going to die that's what we believe. No matter who you are, no matter what you believe, no matter where you're going, no matter what theology you're into, no matter what religion you're in, you're going to die. Hmm. And if we, we, for the life of me, I don't understand this, but we still base it on a curse that came upon humans uh, when we were in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. right. But we have, in the same breath, we say that Yeshua fulfilled the, uh, um, all of the law. Yeah. If all of that's fulfilled through the blood of Yeshua, then on, I do not have to be bound to the fact that I have to live only for 120 years. On, right. So we just need to kind of move out of what we are bound into. That's why I always say this, and it's because that's where I'm at in my walk right now. Change the way you think. Change the way you think. Change the way you think. Yes, Change Lord. the way you, you think. think. Amen. Why are you talking? Amen. So I don't even need a lot of That was Afrikaans. I can't say it in any other language. I can. I can't. 
<laughs> I was going to say I can make as if it, I'm saying it in another language, hmm. because you guys won't know anyway, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> But, but those Afrikaners, they, they understand what I'm saying. Then in, uh, in John 6, verse from his 53, it says this, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, that kind of sounds gross, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have no life in yourselves. Right. Let's just stop there for a second. Right. Because if we understand that in the blood is life, then I would, I, would, I, would, I would suck that blood, bring it on to me. <laughs> and I, and that's what I need to do to, to have what he wants to bring it, give me, I'll do it. But that's not quite what he means, right? Because we're so Greek mm -hmm. that we begin to think, oh, well, it has to be vampirism and it has to be um, cannibalism. Just like some of the sects out there, right? Mm -hmm. And we begin to understand, well, it's actually what he wants us to shift with into the spirit realm. Yes. That's right. Because I can't physically eat of him or drink of him. Uh, it's literally, I think it's illegal to eat human flesh. All right. I don't know. That sounds like it should be illegal. And definitely to drink human blood. Yes, Lord. But obviously it's a spiritual act. And that spiritual act and understanding what it sets you to produces life in you. Mm -hmm. But it's an everlasting life. It's a life that changes your DNA. That recreates you. Because if I accept him, then what happens? The old man passes away. Mm -hmm. yes. And there's a recreation of a new man that takes place in the new life that I have in him. I, lo I love that. Mm -hmm. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up in the last days. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Mm -hmm. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Now you have to understand something. When I accept Yeshua as my Lord and Savior, immediately I'm seated in Him in, 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 in heavenly places, right? Yes. So I'm immediately divided into two dimensions. The kingdom of earth, the kingdom of heaven. And there's two different realms, two different dimensions of um, facilities that I can step into. And so the Father wants me to understand the primary place for me to live and move and have my being in is not on the earth. Right? Although that's what we perceive because, well, that's all I understand. But if I am called to be a spirit, uh, to overshadow my soul and my body, then primary me is a spirit being. And so everything that primarily happens to me has to first take place in the spirit for it to begin to flow into the natural and have the effect that it's supposed to have. Yeah. All right. So with a dead spirit or a spirit that just gives life to my soul and my body, I could never have experienced that in my life before. But now that I'm a spirit being, I get to experience the spiritual effect of what I'm engaging and what I'm supposed to be walking in to such an extent that it begins to change my soul and my body. Because my body and my soul begins to experience the things my soul of my spirit's pouring into it. All right, that's good. That's if you guys understand what I'm saying. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I abide in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also will become, uh, will live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, uh, not as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. Yes, Lord. I love this scripture. Yes. That's good. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely yes. love it. And it's just, it just changes our understanding of who Yeshua really is. Amen. That I cannot live without him. I cannot have the fullness of life in any way, fashion, or form without him. The blood that was shed. And we understand that it was every drop of blood. Mm. <laughs> every drop of blood. Because eventually it was just water and blood. Amen. Which means the blood was already dripped. I mean, can you imagine what it looked like? Where he was, you know, um, th th they pierced all his, um, what do you call it, uh, main arteries. Yeah. All his blood ran out. And before he even got crucified, he got whooped really, really badly. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie, The Passion of Christ? Yes, yes, yes. I love that movie because he first get the first 40 lashes with a stick. Mm. If you can remember that scene. Mm -hmm. And it was excruciating and probably extremely painful. And I remember myself and a friend of mine, we were doing experiments. So I had a cane in my hand and I took magazines and I put it on his butt. And what I would do is I would run a little bit, I would step back and I would run and jump and I would hit on these books as hard as I possibly can and see 
What damage I can do to the books? Well, to his detriment, the books slid off. Ooh. And I came down with uh, full force with this cane and I whacked him on his bottom. Wow. There was blood. Right, there was blood. But it wasn't ripped open like the cat of nine tails. So the first 40 lashes in this movie, Yeshua stood there and he was in pain, but he knew because he didn't go. He just stood and he was waiting for the, for the cat of nine tails because he knew this was not the way it was spoken to him. This is not what he saw. Why? Because the, the veil, which was his body, yeah. wasn't torn. All right, mm -hmm. that's good. It was bruised, but it wasn't torn. Yeah. So when the cat of nine tails came in, and that's what I love about this specific scene. It's a terrible scene, and it made me uh, cry snot and tears. But it, it, it pre predicted it pretty much accurate, because it was, it was not just uh, flogged on the back. Mm -hmm. on the because the reality is, when my back cannot take anymore, I'm going to turn. But they're not stopping. And that's what I, they didn't stop. They kept on hitting him. So on the side, on the stomach, on the legs, on the and everywhere, his entire body got flogged with his cat of nine tails. Now, if you understand, it is bone and glass and metal pieces. Yeah. It has nine strings attached to a stick, and it's long. Mm -hmm. And when it hits you and you pull it away, it rips out the flesh. Rips it. All right. Man. Rips. So there was already a lot of bloodshed right there. The crown wasn't just placed on his head, it was, it was forced into his skull. Come on. Now, I don't know if you've ever, in Afrikaans, we call it the kamil duren boom. It's, it's the type of thorns that was used to put on his head. I don't know exactly what that's called in English. I mean, they just call it a crown of thorns. Mm -hmm. But um, we did some study and we found out exactly what type of uh, thorns it was. It's nasty. Mm. It's, it's, got a, it's got a V like this and it's attached to a branch mm. and it is sharp and it is strong. Wow. It's not something you want to fall into or accidentally climb into. It, it will literally rip you up. It's mm. nasty. So we understand that he, his blood was poured, it was spilled. And we understand that as, as this happened in the natural, there was darkness that came upon the face of the earth. All right. All right. That's the blood of Yeshua. That's the power of the blood of Yeshua. Yes. Darkness came upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. When his blood fell onto the ground, what happened? The ground started opening up. Mm -hmm. There was earthquakes and shaking. Yes. And the rocks exploded from the inside out. Yes. The dead was raised. Yeah. That in itself is kind of freaky. Oh. Because it was the weekend of Passover, so no one could even go and close the graves. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was dead people walking all over the place. And then, of course, the veil was torn. Mm -hmm. The veil was torn because of what Yeshua did, because of his presence in creation, so that he could open up for us to go in, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. The blood carries within it the ability to recreate. <coughs> Your genes are recreated. Your DNA is recreated through the process of exchange. Mm -hmm. My life for yours. I step into you. I climb into you. I, I clothe myself with you, Yeshua. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Thank you, Lord. That exchange so that we can agree together and live in 100% union with each other. Me and him. The blood can, can recreate body parts. It can recreate broken down structures of the soul. Not even to say our soul is uh, broken. Well, I'm not talking about everybody, but there's uh, many out there, spiritual, born again, sons and daughters of Yahweh with broken spirit, bro broken souls. souls. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Because of the way we think, the way we understand, the way we perceive, the way we were taught, the way we, we live, the way we live, the way we were forced to live. The things that we begin to do in our, in our younger lives that formed a pattern in our lives that got us to do certain things. Yahweh's blood literally realigns that and brings it back into full fruition. It's a recreation of what it originally was made and intended to be. That is something I absolutely love. It can enter into the cracks and crevices and renew and rebuild. The blood can repair broken relationships. You know, if there's one thing the Father hates, it's the breaking up of relationships. Why? Right. Remind yourself of this. We are the body. We are the body, yeah. 
We are the body of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if my body is in war with itself. Mm. I remember driving down the road and I saw a, a, a homeless guy that usually come to our church and we kind of feed him. He's a very nice guy. Um, not, it's not, it doesn't seem to be on drugs, it doesn't seem to be drinking or anything. He's got some screws loose, so there's obviously a reason why he's on the street. But we try to help him, we just kind of love on him. And so I drive past him, see him walking in the street, and the Lord says to me, I'll need you to bless him. Right. So I, 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 have to make a, I have to turn into a house, I make a U-turn, you know, turn around and come back. And as I stop, I turn into the house, as I stop to turn it out, I look at him, he stops. And he takes his hand, his fist, and he starts beating himself up. Ooh, all right. By the time I got there, his nose were all skew, his lip was swollen like this, there was blood all over his face, his, his, his eye was standing like this. Mm. Now, it's demonic, right? All right. But that's kind of what happens to the body of Christ when we have broken relationships. All right, come on. Because it's called friendly fire. Because yeah. who goes and beats himself up? A, a, a demon that hates you, that's in you. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I got to, to speak into his life. I got to prophesy over him. I got to pray with him. And, and we got to get him delivered. You know, where he is today, I don't know. But we trust that he's made the right decisions. Yes, Lord. But that's just an example I want to use. The, the, the body, the blood of Yeshua is there to repair broken relationships. Oh, really? hmm. It is there to calm the wind and snow in the stormy sea. It's to bring you to that place where you understand, well, it's not so much my will in getting this done the way I want it to be done. But it's to bring the peace that's supposed to be in this relationship to have it in its full fruition. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many understand? You do not always have to correct everybody. All right. All right now. Just because they're wrong, it's not always your responsibility to correct everybody. Your correction to the person that's in the wrong place can cause an explosion. All right. As a matter of fact, your correction in the wrong attitude, although it could be a good idea to correct at the time that you're correcting, if it's in the wrong attitude or even in the wrong word setting, it can cause an explosion. All right. Amen. So I'll give you an example. My, my son, so he was Torin, was the older so it was Torin. He was raised in the church. Mm -hmm. I was assistant pastor, and it was an incredible, beautiful church. And so I would preach with him sleeping on my arm. He'll be in my arm, lying on my arm like this, and he will sleep, and I will be preaching. And so if, if I get tired, someone else will take him. Um, and a matter of fact, sometimes my pastor would be preaching, and he would hold a uh, 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 cure, a uh, torrent. Sorry, I've got so many kids, I don't always know their names. And he would hold torrent. So he grew up. So eventually when he started walking, he would be up and down, and, and everybody would pick him up and love on him, and he would be in front, and, 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 and the pastor would just enjoy his presence because he, he was that type of baby, you know. Then one day, the senior pastor of the mother church came, and my son was, of course, doing the same thing, and it was a major issue. So my pastor spoke to me about it with a completely wrong attitude. Now, I did not have a great attitude about this either. We ended up screaming and shouting at each other. It was fun. We didn't punch each other. But it also would have been fun if we did. Okay, don't, don't, don't look at me with that tone. But and I, I, I didn't accept it. I thought to myself, you know, the way you're bringing this towards me, in essence, it's your fault. You allowed it as much as what I allowed it. It wasn't a weak spot. It wasn't a weak aspect of who I am as a character in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, you can't even, if your kids are not in control, then how can you be in control of your life? You know, the scripture talks about something like that. Yeah. But um, I didn't accept him talking to me in this manner, I thought that it was done in the wrong way. Although, yes, in essence, Torin was out of line. Per se, it was my fault, but it was always allowed. Now, all of a sudden, it's not allowed. So, there has to be a process of change to really get it back to where it's supposed to be. Amen. All right. Amen. So, this, the, 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 the um, assistant pastor of the senior pastor... Um, sitting next to me while we're having dinner and I've already forgotten about it. It's not a really a major issue. I mean, I love my pastor and he loves me and we could get over ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. All right. But then he, the senior pastor of the senior pastor, or the, the assistant pastor of the senior pastor of the mother church. I don't know if that makes any sense. He's like, um, what? He confronts me with the same issue in a completely different way. 
in such a way that I understand exactly where he's coming from, exactly what he's saying, and I agree with it, no harm, no fuss, no mess, no frustration, no irritation, no war, no fighting, just peace, I get it, I agree with him, we come to the conclusion we enjoy the meal together. Because it's the way you do it. Amen. Right? I don't know why I'm hammering on this, but someone needs to hear it. Amen. Right? We can't constantly have war where we're supposed to work together. The body of Christ is one with each other. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Now my arm just starts doing this because it feels like doing something weird, then there's a problem. Mm. Yeah. So the blood brings restoration. Restoration. <coughs> restoration. With the blood I can go into the memory banks of my heart and the processes of my soul and reform and recreate and make new and fresh. Mm. <coughs> a lot of this stuff has already happened in a measure for all of us. Right. But everything that's taken place for most of us at, at this point in our walk with Yahweh happened on this side of the veil. Okay. Now this side of the veil is powerful because on this side of the veil I'm the bride. Mm. I have a, a beautiful relationship. I love him. He's incredible. He's my life. I study him, I meditate on him, I engage with him, I pray to him, I seek his face, I worship him, and he comes and he changes me, he lives in me. He rearranges and realigns things in my life, but when I enter in behind the veil, I shift mm -hmm. into a deeper, higher, wider place in him. I become the body. Yes, yes, when I come, yes. become the body, everything I've worked on on this side of the veil shifts into a higher place. Mm -hmm. yes. right. right? Joshua the high priest. Holiest man in the nation prepares for three months before he goes into the Holy of Holies. He enters into the kingdom of heaven and Yahweh goes, Whoa, you're nasty. You're filthy. The holiest man in the world is filthy. Why? Because when you step in, there's a whole different dimension that opens up. A whole new realm of responsibilities. A whole new realm of intimacy and holiness and purity. Because on this side of the veil, I am pure compared to what's around me. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. When I can be the holiest guy in a group of 10 men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I know this sounds like a little bit of boasting, but I could walk in the gym and I know for a fact this guy suffers with that, that lady struggles with this. This couple is going through this stuff. I know what they're going through too and I can look at my life and think, I, if I have to measure this, I am holier than what they are. Mm -hmm. That's just the way we judge. Yeah. Which is not really a good yeah. way of looking at it, but I'm trying to get an example across. Yeah. So in, in yeah. 9 out of 10 times, I am the holiest in the room. 9 out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. Depends on where I'm at, right? Mm -hmm. right? But when I enter into the kingdom of heaven, 9 out of 10 times, I am the dirtiest, nastiest, disgustingest person there. All right. hmm. Because it's measured at a different point. Yeah. Everyone that's in front of me has no trace or record of sin. Come on. I come in with a record and trace of sin in me. Mm -hmm. come on. So that has to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. So the blood shifts me into a different dimension of the kingdom of Yahweh so I can begin to deal with what can't be dealt with on this side of the veil. That's, good. that's why the torn veil is so key for us to go in. That's why the blood is the doorway. and That's why the blood is so important for us to have revelation of. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. How are you guys doing? We understand that memories are, are links, uh, it's like links in the DNA strand, um, which can form um, mutations of the original plan. So one's ability to walk uprightly um, and maintain a forward thrust in motion is obstructed. Does that make sense to you? There's a way that we're supposed to operate, a way that we're supposed to walk in the fullness of Yahweh, but when we hover in the scaffold on this side of the veil, we don't get to that full measure. Oh, okay. All right. That's why we have to understand, although I'm covered in the blood, it's not about being covered in the blood. Being covered in the blood on this side of the veil is basically where you're going to get it. Hmm. But I don't want to be covered by the blood, I want to go into the blood. Yes, into the blood. yes. Woo. Yes, Lord, that's good. Because inside of the blood is where that dimension of light is where I need to be yes. going in so that what's not supposed to be can be exposed. Ooh. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Yes, that's good. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Memories are often so buried, buried because, because of pain. 
that they are hidden away in iron caskets instead of being brought to the light to be washed and refreshed and the DNA restored to God's original plan and beyond. It's His desire to get you to that position in your life where you are literally, that's why sons and daughters are different than children of God. Because you become a son and a daughter when you live in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Not when you get born again. Oh, well, sons and daughters, brother. No, you're not. The Bible talks about something very intense here. It says, mm -hmm. uh, the sons, the, 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 the creation is calling out to the sons. Yes. If you look at that yes. word sons, you very quickly see that it's not a just normal sons. It's called the mature ones. Mm -hmm. all right. I say this all the time. Not the manure ones. There's the sons and daughters of the Christians out there that's been in church for 30, 40, 50 years. Mm. They're so many sons. Mm. <laughs> Why? Because we're scaffolding on this side of the veil. Why, if the, if the veil is torn, are we not in it? Mm. Going beyond it? Mm. Yeah. Why do we want to be covered by the blood and go into the blood? Into the fullness of who Yahweh is, understanding that blood is congealed light. I get to step into him and he overshadows all of who I am and enhances me to the next phase of my walk. Mm -hmm. I remind you that my, my purpose, my destiny is dimensional, multidimensional, meaning that I have a purpose and a destiny in Zion, but I have a purpose and destiny on earth, yeah. both at the same time. <coughs> Any amen. Amen. I, I need you guys to understand that because for some reason we think, well, I'm on earth right now. No, you're not. You're also multidimensional. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. We understand that God has a plan and a purpose for every single person on the planet. Matter of fact, His desire is to open you up to such an extent that you get to go into the kingdom of heaven where He can release and reveal to you what your um, your scroll says. Yes. Now I've said this many times. We understand that before I was sent into my mother's womb, I agreed to certain things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, before I, I started walking in these revelations, I did not even for one second think that I just needed to have my spirit remember the things I agreed to. Mm. I just wanted to do anything and everything that's good. Yeah. Because that sounds like a good idea. Good idea. But I'm going to understand a good idea and a God idea is two different two things. things. Mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> right. It's a good idea for anybody and everybody to cast out demons, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards. Not the leopards, the lepers. Mm -hmm. uh, you can cleanse the leopard if you really want to, but it's probably going to bite your arm off, right? <laughs> uh, but the idea is I can do all those things. I can, I can, I can. Pray for the sick. I can do all these things. I can lead people to salvation. And it sounds like that's what we all should do. It's but so. for some, there's more than just that written on your scroll. Yes, yes. Every Christian should be doing that, no doubt, right? Yes, right. Yes. But that's not it. All right. My, my gifts is not my call. Okay. It's my gifts. Uh -huh. My call overshadows my gifts. Yes. And I have to walk in the fullness of what I'm called to. I must walk into the fullness of what's written on my scroll, the things that I agree to. Because if I'm doing things that I did not agree to, I'm operating in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Meaning I'm doing things out of my own self. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's a work of iniquity. Yes, of Lord. Iniquity. Ooh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. You understand that as I continue to walk in His blood, I enter in through His blood. And that which I see as my destiny mm -hmm. comes through Him as a filter. And the pure truth is presented to me. That's why I always say, and I, I love the way Ian actually brought this to light. Uh, many years he uh, shared a testimony, a, a teaching on the nine skins. All right. Mm -hmm. I love that message. I preach it many times. I made it my own. I've engaged in those nine skins. I live in those nine skins. But now it has been, it, it, and of course we understand that even within the nine skins, I live and move and I have my being in him. So if I take the nine skins and the live and move and I have my being in him, that's twelve. Now, in the beginning, it was the, 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 12 skin, the nine skins, which was the, um, the, the, the plus my soul, my body, and my spirit, which is 12, which was the 12 stones on the breastplate of the priest. Mm. But now it is the 12 steps or in, uh, um, um, guidelines that I need to follow when I'm engaging into the heavens or when I'm engaging in an encounter of any kind to make sure that what I'm doing, where I'm going, is Yahweh. Mm. Woo. All right. Because it's in Him that I am 
on pole. It's outside of him that I'm going zigzag up, down, yeah, there. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just doing what's good. All right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. That's good. Me. That sounds like uh, That's good. someone that likes to preach like that. Uh, the same thing happened to me on uh, Friday, uh, on Tuesday. I started to taking my last word and stretching it out like, like a real preacher does. And then I'm, Jesus. <laughs> I really try not to do that, but it kind of comes out like that when you get all excited and you start preaching weird. Stop doing How about Jesus? <laughs> oh, shut up, the bum. Stop preaching like that. <laughs> you better watch out. <laughs> better watch out. I'm about to jump on somebody. Break, jump on a chair. Oh my goodness, I laughed so much like one day. That. I was in a church with uh, my, uh, my whole congregation. We were sharing a, a, a church. And I kind of always make fun of. Of, of, of that way of Peter preaching just because it's not something I really climb into. But I remember sharing the, 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 the meeting with this congregation and this preacher just stands and jumps up on the chair and he's screaming yeah. and shouting and he doesn't say anything. It was just funny. And the chair breaks. <laughs> and he falls down on the floor. <laughs> Me and my wife and our congregation, we were laughing so hard. We were just hoping that they think it's the Holy Spirit. But it was... Yeah, the spirit of laughter. Oh, yeah. The spirit of laughter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Help us, Lord. <laughs> we understand that the blood is the gateway into the fullness of the I am. And we understand that He is the truth. And if I enter into Him, I cannot make mistakes. You know, there's a company of people that does not have to go through that process of doing wrong and making wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. Because if, I am, if I'm in the Holy Spirit, righteousness, joy, and peace, <coughs> in the full measure of what He pours into me and over me and what I'm into when I'm in Him, if I'm in the way, the truth, and the life and understand the fullness of the Word and who Yahweh and Yeshua, who Yeshua truly is, in that dimension of the truth, I am completely sealed. That's already six skins that protects me. But then I step into the Father and His justice, judgment, and holiness. I step into him and he overshadows me. That's nine skins. And then I live and move and have my being in, in him. That's 12. Um, uh, uh, um, skins that covers me. That allows me to know that I'm in him. That anything I encounter that's outside of any of those nine things. I can reject or step out of and step back into through Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. See, he's made it safe for us. Yes. That's why in Him, I can engage anything in the kingdom of heaven and come out with a new revelation of the fullness of who He is. Yes. Uh, I have experienced uh, you, men and women, even on YouTube, friends, people I love, that, that talks the biggest load of skapoof mm -hmm. that you've ever heard in your entire life. Because you cannot merge the two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Now I say two kingdoms, Satan does not have a kingdom. But you cannot merge the, the, dark, the dark side, which we understand as to be the demonic realm, you cannot merge the demonic realm with the kingdom of heaven. All right. Oh, yes. You cannot confuse the two either. Mm -hmm. But if you do not operate in the nine skins and then live and move and have your being in him, you will have a double-sided revelation that brings you to a place of destruction and nullification of those that engages with you and to yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, I, I've seen it so many times. And don't for one second think a child of God can't have a demon. Uh -huh. Right? I mean, that's where we cast most demons out of. Yeah, all right. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, help us. Ooh, help us. What I've now noticed, <laughs> this is very funny, but instead of just, <laughs> I don't know if I should say that, this is what I figured out. People, instead of calling the ladies in the, in the, Meetings fight with each other. Okay. And instead of calling each other the B word, is, is there a B word? Yes. Yeah. They say Jezebel. Oh, yeah. Jesus, help us. She's a Jezebel. Hmm. Everyone can't be Jezebel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every B or whatever you want to call it can't be a Jezebel. It's just your perception of that person that needs to change. All right, mm -hmm. man. Now, I'm not saying that she or he shouldn't change, mm -hmm. but everyone can't be Jezebel. All right. Come on. Everything can't be a demon. Someone needs to take responsibility. Amen. Amen. 
<laughs> when I'm in Him, in the fullness of who He is, and He covers me and He overshadows me, I don't make mistakes like that. Uh, All right. Yes, Lord. I, I, I see funny things in, in my meetings. Uh, right? Uh -huh. And so I don't always get to address it because I'm not always there when I hear the stories come in. But we need to begin to look at ourselves. Yes. Because if, if, if me and my wife fight uh -huh. and she did something wrong, uh, this is my way of looking at it. I could be wrong, but immediately I step back and I'm thinking to myself, as the priest in the house, uh -huh. what did I do wrong to have her think that way and do what she did? Now, please, my wife is kind of incredible, so she doesn't really make as many mistakes as what I do. But I would look back at what I have done wrong because yeah. I want to take responsibility for that. Because we are one. And if I did not love her right, if I did not give her the attention she needs, if I did not say what needed to be said at the right time, and she perceived something in a different way, or she came into the house and this wasn't done or that wasn't done, or whatever, she asked me to do something and I didn't do it, uh, it's my responsibility. Yeah. If my kids do something wrong at school, it's my responsibility. I get to come back and say, okay, well, what happened? Where did I do something wrong? What did I need to change to get everyone around me back on the track? Yeah, sanctify mm -hmm. it. That's good. Amen. It's my responsibility. Take take some responsibility. Yes. Take it. You know, yes. you want to go into the courts, you want to take responsibility for where you are in your in your in your genealogy, in your bloodline, take responsibility. Yes. You wanna you wanna pray for your nation, you have to take responsibility. Yes. You wanna pray for your mother in law, you have to take responsibility. Yes, Amen. Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> That's right. Yes. You guys okay? Yes. I'm seriously preaching tonight. Yes. Seriously yes. preaching. Help us, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Say, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. All things have passed away, and behold, all mm -hmm. things become mm -hmm. new. Yes. That's an interesting scripture because there's many ways of reading it. <laughs> Therefore, if any man is in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. New creature. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So only if you're in Christ, right. you become a new creature. Yes. Then it says, old things have passed away. Yes. Yes. I, I can guarantee you some other translations is going to say it differently. Uh -huh. Right? So you can go study and read the different translations because, again, we are the only religion that doesn't stick to the original text. Mm. That's right. Mm. Matter of fact, we are the only religion that has got hundreds of different translations. I actually have no problem with translations. I enjoy the different translations, right? But we always have to go to the original to make sure that what you perceive and read in the others are actually the truth. Yes. And not just a statement made by someone that interpreted something the way they like it. All right. For all things have passed away. The old things have passed away. Yes. Meaning the things of the old is no longer there. No so if I've given my life to Yeshua and I'm born from above, at that moment, everything before that time has passed away. Now you have to understand that because it's not my wife, it's not my kids, it's not my father and, and my mother, it's not my friends, yeah. right? It's the way I used to be, yeah. the things I used to say, the things I used to do, the things I used to perceive and understand, the revelation I used to have. Mm -hmm. But we still want to carry our religious perceptions into our new walk. I remember that because I was raised in a religious way and it bound me for many years. And until I got to the place where I hated religion. Mm -hmm. Then I got set free from my old ways and my past. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Behold, all things are become new. Yes. First of all, no one talks like that. All things are become new. Oh. <laughs> Is that just me? My English. Maybe it was an American that wrote it. Meaning that all things are now new. All things. And of course, even in this scripture, it's a measure because from that point of new, I still get to go to the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. to perceive and receive a whole dimension of new revelation from a whole other realm that propels me to a deeper place. Mm -hmm. And as I go enter into the blood through what Yeshua did on the cross, I am recreated. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. Let's stand. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blood recreates. Yes. Ooh, yes. 
Father, as we step into that dimension of recreation, when we begin to understand what you've yes, opened up for Lord. us, we begin to understand what we are capable of and who we are Thank and who you have designed us to be and who you have created us to be. Father, we want to step in and out into the fullness of what's available for us right now as the Ecclesia. There's much legislation that needs to take place. There's much healing that's, uh, that this world needs, Father. And the way we're doing things right now, it cannot and will not do what needs to be done. You will never return if we continue to do the things that we are doing right now. We have to change the way we've been doing things for the last 2,000 years. And the way we do that is by entering into the kingdom of heaven, living, <coughs> moving, having our being in you, living in the skins so and the fullness of who Yad He Vav He is. Yes. Legislating that full kingdom as we live in it and breathe in it. We live it and bring it into the kingdom of heaven. We answer the call of creation and we begin to speak life as we as sons and daughters rest upon the earth in your image. So you can come and present yourself in that same image. You say in your word that the son of man has no place to lay his head. Why? Because there was no image for you to rest upon. So we have to recreate the image in the earth for you to come rest upon. And of course we understand head is not the physical head for him to sleep on a place or have a rest or a place to live. It is his governance has no place to rest because his image is not fulfilled in creation. So as we begin to understand what needs to be done, we begin to understand who we are as spirit beings. We legislate from out of the kingdom of heaven that fullness of your image into creation. We answer the call. We begin to align and propel things back into place. And we will see the fullness of your glory restoring things to what it's supposed to be. Father, we love you. We praise you. You're an incredible, beautiful, awesome, majestic God. We love you. We speak life into everything you've given us and given us covenants over, Father. We, by the hand of Yahweh, as you consume us with your presence, we touch all of creation with spirit man consumed in your glory so we can begin to align and propel things as it's meant to be from the very beginning father we love you we praise you in the name of yeshua thank you for your blood jesus amen, amen.